Well, good morning, Greenwich, and welcome to the Tuesday, January 18th edition of the Basement Academy. Our morning psalm is truly one of my favorites. I say that every day, right? Psalm 138. Love this one and love some of the language of purpose, God fulfilling his purpose for our lives. This is a psalm of David. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand, you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Amen. May it be so, Lord, that we would know you are fulfilling your purpose in our lives, through our lives, and may your name and word be exalted in us. Okay, let's think together again about cultivating character, the very character of Christ. And so um, talking yesterday, uh, sharing some of the biblical witness uh, from Ephesians, from Colossians, from James, from Matthew, there's this word, a Greek word that sits behind in the original text of the Bible, New Testament, a Greek word that sits behind our English words that are sometimes translated as mature, sometimes as complete, sometimes as perfect. And the word is telos, a, a, that's the root word, which has this notion of uh, being whole, being finished, um, fulfilling a purpose. The, the, the word perfect, again, I, it's a great word, obviously, but it, it is, ends up being off-putting. But I like that, that grammatical sense that the perfect tense of a verb is completed action, a verb that is communicating completed action. And so this notion that God's purpose for us is to grow up, to mature, to develop, to become something that we're not in completion, to, to be complete. We are incomplete, and so make us whole. And so the, the broader understanding around this is teleology, okay? Hopefully you can see the word telos here. Teleology is the study of purpose. So a teleological argument is an argument from purpose. There is a goal, there is an aim, uh, there is an end uh, in sight. And, and so I want to think with you just for a few minutes this morning how relevant this idea is, even though we don't recognize it. Uh, you, you maybe are being introduced to the word telos and teleology uh, for the first time, and I'm not trying to, you know, dazzle you with my brilliance. There is no brilliance here, but these are helpful concepts. And so we ask the question, what is the end of life? Well, we, having just gone through this, you know, just a little over a year ago, or, or about a year ago right now, end of life decisions that we as a family were facing with my mother. Um, she was alert and so participating in many of these conversations, but, you know, we had advanced directives in place. Um, you know, we had some lengthy conversation about do not resuscitate orders, DNR. Um, 
uh, mom and, and dad, you know, had done their last will and testament. And so there were some things around that. And so, you know, thinking about the end of life um, and I- impending uh, and approaching death is something probably we should all do, right? Uh, teach us to number our days aright. The psalmist says that we may uh, gain a heart of wisdom. We live well when we recognize that life will end. <clears throat> And so what is the end of life? Well, death, right? And so the decisions one faces around that. Let me, let me take that notion. What is the end of? What is the end of education? High school diploma, graduation, a GED. Um, when you decide to stop going to school, um, you know, for some, the education ends at uh, college, the college level. And so education ending, but you know, we want to be lifelong learners, right? So the end of education is when we stop learning, right? When we stop being committed to truth and, and the like. What is the end of marriage? Well, I guess you could say somewhat cynically, divorce is what ends marriage, right? Um, a midlife crisis <laughs> often ends marriage. Um, you know, that leads to, leads to divorce or something. Uh, what is the end of parenting? Is it when the kids graduate uh, high school and, you know, move off to college and they're back a, you know, few months out of the year? Uh, is, is the uh, end of uh, parenting empty nesting, right? And so when, when it's just the two of you, you're, you're done parenting and, and you, you know, once in a while, you know, see the kids, etc. What is the end of work? Well, retirement, I guess. Or when you quit. Um, you know, we're we're in the great resignation right now, right? A lot of people, you know, millions of people just just leaving the workplace, work the workforce. Uh, the pandemic is playing into that. And so the end of work, uh, you know, your retirement party, uh, getting your pension, your gold watch, uh, et cetera, you know, some of those, those stereotypical uh, images. What is the end of science? Hmm. Well, maybe science doesn't end, right? We see the growth of science. You know, as long as people are thinking and doing experiments, you know, the end of science is when we stop funding it, right? Maybe, maybe that's what some people, or when people believe misinformation, you know, there's all that language now, <laughs> you know, I follow the science, but science is an inexact um, discipline because it's always exploring. The word itself means knowledge, comes from the uh, root meaning of knowledge to know and so the end of science is when we believe myths in fairy tales like religion and, and things so the science ends when people no longer believe uh, the, the scientists and the truth um, what's the end of sports well the pandemic ended sports last year right you know people didn't go. Uh, you know, well, the end of the game is when the clock runs out in the fourth quarter and the ref blows the whistle and, you know, you got a winner uh, and a loser. Um, the championship game, the Super Bowl, is the end of football, right? That's the, that's the last game in the football season. What is the end of politics? So you can ask this question really of any uh, discipline, any human activity, you know, what is the end of that thing? Uh, what is the end of politics when we all cooperate, you know, when we're not fighting anymore? Is that going to be the end of politics? Politics itself is really geared for a fight, particularly in a two-party system uh, as we have. And so you, you can ask the question, in of these various disciplines and you there's an answer right 
what is the end of Christianity? Again, well, you know, when, when science triumphs and ignorance and mythology and fairy tales are, are put to bed, that will be the end of, end of God, end of religion, end of Christianity, as many would, I think, like to see in our society. There's another sense to that word end that I think is in need of recovery. It's perhaps an older sense and one that we know, but we often forget. This older sense that seems to be lost somewhat in our secular and secularizing uh, society and in our postmodern world. So not just modern, but postmodern. The notion of postmodernity is that kind of deconstructing the foundations of our society that have been built upon. So like critical race theory is a postmodern theory. It's deconstructing. It's taking something that's been taken for granted and it's, it's, it's deconstructing it. It's unpacking it. It's, it's, it's um, uh, tearing it down, if we could say it that way. And so there's an older sense of the word end that ties us back into this notion of the telos, okay, teleology. What is the end of life? Not, not death and do not resuscitate orders uh, and uh, advanced directives. It's what's the purpose of life? The word end functions in two ways. It can speak to the termination of. So what is the end of education? Well, it's when you graduate, get your diploma. What is the end of um, marriage? Um, divorce, right? Okay. Or till death do us part, till one, you know, one partner dies. What is the end of parenting? To get those kids out of your hair, right? To launch them and, and be done with it. But if you take end in a very different way, so what is the end of a football game? Well, it's when the fourth quarter clock runs out and the ref blows the whistle and, you know, whatever. What is the end of the football game? Well, it is to score more points. What is the purpose of the football game? It is to score more points than the other team. Okay, that's one way of asking it. So what is the end of life? That is to say, what is the purpose of life? Hmm. That's a very different discussion than advanced directives and DNR orders, right? What is the end of education? It's not just graduation. That is, what is the purpose of education? Hmm. Well, maybe it's to form character and wisdom and understanding learning how to think and to engage, to be prepared for a world. Okay, so that's a, different, that's a different question altogether. What is the end of marriage? That is, what is the purpose of marriage? Well, that man and woman would reflect the image of God, the glory of God from the garden, so that they're kind of Adam and Eve all over again, being fruitful and multiplying and nurturing and carving out a little little garden that they would tend that is their home and then having children and and and, and so hmm that's a very different the end of marriage is to bear witness to the, the love of Jesus Christ for his church as the husband lays down his life for the wife for his wife we read that in Ephesians chapter 5 that's a very different the end of marriage is to to have the husband and wife, the man and woman grow and become more Christ-like and more loving and more sacrificial. Hmm, that's a very different. What is the end of parenting? It is to raise children, to, to, to love the Lord and to, to walk in his ways. The end of parenting is to train these children in the way they should go. It, it has to do with the formation of their lives and their character and relationships and the like, okay? What is the end of work? Is it just getting a gold watch and when you retire? What is the purpose of work? The purpose of work is to labor and to serve and to build and to create and to 
to um, serve the larger community, right? Vocation is tied into that. Vocation comes from vocare, to call, the calling, right? So work is a calling that I'm somehow serving this larger thing we call society or community. What is the end of science? That is, what is the end of the purpose of science? Is it to master the universe so we can eliminate the need for God? That's what some scientists think. Or is it to think God's thoughts after him? As uh, I think that might have been Francis Bacon, possibly Blaise Pascal, who said that. So the purpose of science is to understand the world that God has created so that we can live more fruitful lives and we can relieve human suffering and we can um, uh, build and develop and grow uh, society in such a way that uh, um, need and want are reduced, right? Is so, so the end, the purpose of, of, of science. The purpose of sports, well, you could say, well, it's to win championships. Okay. I would argue that it's to teach teamwork, respect uh, for authority, um, uh, exercise, uh, the building of character, um, because losing is happens more often than winning uh it, it seems there's only one team that wins the championship in the end and so everyone else you could argue would be a loser and so there's a the formation of character that happens through that so you could you could argue there's a purpose to sports that has little to do with championships and the like what is the purpose of politics which really ties into governance Is it to win at all costs and to grab all the power that's there? Is that the purpose? It seems that that's what some people think. Or is the purpose of politics to work out the polity, work out the ground rules, work out how we should share this life together, how we will uh, organize ourselves and order ourselves and share resources uh, in this world and that seems like a greater purpose for politics than just to win so I can have the power, so I can impose my rules on you, the loser, okay? So hopefully you catch this. End as termination, end as purpose. So this is important as we talk about this cultivating the character of Christ. What is the end of our faith? That is, what is the purpose of our faith? What is the purpose for which God sent his son Jesus? Is it for us to get saved so we can have our little ticket that we can produce when we die and till then we can just live how we want, right? <laughs> the end of faith is to give me a ticket that gives me assurance that I'm taken care of for the future. Now I'm just going to go live any old way I want. I don't think so. Okay, but there are streams of thinking that seem to reflect that. That the Christian faith is simply about getting as many people saved, that is, get their ticket, and I'm just going to move on, as opposed to salvation is something that is robust. <laughs> I have been saved, I've been justified, brought into right relationship. I am being saved, I am being transformed. I will be saved uh, in the future. I will be perfected, I will be completed and made whole. The three tenses of salvation as we've talked about in our theology series. So I just wanted to kind of tease this out because this is how salvation, and our faith and character formation intersect with life <laughs> to get us thinking that God created a world with a purpose. There is a goal, there is, there is an end towards which life is moving, the world is moving, God's purposes are moving, and not simply in the, the termination of it, though I believe life as we understand it in this world will end at some point when Christ returns and he ushers in the kingdom of God and finally fully and forever uh, we will be with the Lord 
And so just think about that overnight. We'll, we'll come back. We'll tease out a few more thoughts around this, but it has to do with thinking about the purpose of our lives. Okay, let's close with prayer now. Father, thank you that you have revealed in Scripture that there is an end, a purpose, a goal towards which life, this life that you've created is moving. Help us to understand that. Help us to cooperate and align ourselves and order our lives around that good end, that purpose. And so when we feel like life is purposeless, <laughs> and we are wandering, and it seems like our world is wandering, Lord, we pray that there would be a restoration and recovery. Help us to be a part of that as we deepen and renew our own understanding through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, may the God of this world, the maker of heaven and earth, draw you, move you, lead you closer to your purpose, the purposes he has for your life this day and forevermore. Amen.